Good evening, I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. We got a great show for you tonight. Um, we've got some great sponsors, but tonight we're going to have Ender One, uh, a local rapper um, who keeps the attention of my wife. Um, she watched this video. We're going to play his new video tonight. You're going to hear from him. He's going to talk a little bit about what he does. Um, and we're going to have a nice conversation coming up in a little bit. Uh, Bill London will be joining us in just a few minutes with uh, today's news, what's going on. And he predicted massive amounts of rain. And if you can hear from the hundred year old building that my office is in, it is just coming down like crazy. It, I mean, it's, I, Noah, is gathering animals right outside my office. Now, they're just possums and raccoons and stuff because we don't have any giraffes or big animals like that, but he's doing his thing out there. Um, and that is coming up in a little bit. And then we have a Lincoln County commissioner is gonna be joining us in just a few minutes. Um, Lincoln County voters just passed an ordinance that will end short-term rentals in five years of unincorporated areas of Lincoln County. And the reason this is valuable to all of us is I think this is a move that you're going to see more and more of because people on the coast are getting very frustrated. People at Sun River, people in Bend, people in all these different tourist areas are really frustrated with all of us tourists. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, our sponsors tonight, Buck Sanitary Service. When you got to go, they're the people to go to. They're one of our sponsors. Also, a New Leaf Hyperbaric and Massage and Wellness Center. Their Green Saturday event is coming up on Saturday the 27th. That's right after Black Friday. And it's the lowest price that they have of the year. You can get a one-hour hyperbaric session for 65 bucks. You can get a one-hour massage for 65 bucks, Or the power bed, that light thing that I did recently, the ultraviolet lights, uh, $35 for 20 minutes. Now, that 65 is the cheapest you're going to get the entire year you can buy as many as you want but you have to do it on the 27th so that saturday so put that on your calendar because you can buy a whole year's worth and that's the best price they ever have uh, during the new year at new leaf now i also want to show i got something new a new toy um, that we're going to show you real quick here so i'm going to pull this out and here we go watch this. <music> That's pretty fancy, Chris Dental. Michael Bratland, the doctor, is in. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Can I'm you good. Hear me? I, like, I like the new little open. We're going to be doing those for all of our clients uh, that want to do that. And a nice little open to kind of get you in the mood. And Michael's here to talk about, he came up with this idea to do for Christmas. All I want for Christmas is a new front tooth. And so that's one tooth. And Michael's going to explain. We're getting some pictures in, but we're not explaining carefully enough. You're the dentist, so you need to explain what this is that they're doing. Yeah, we're looking for, you know, to be able to get somebody a, a new front tooth by Christmas. Ideally, we want somebody that has <clears throat> already has a tooth, but somebody that might have an ugly filling, an ugly crown. I can always do a partial, but we've only had a couple people uh, send in pictures. So we wanted to kind of broaden it. And uh, I'm kind of, you know, I, I think there's a lot of patients that are walking around with a really ugly front crown that they got somewhere. Maybe they got it when they're a kid, because that's something that for sure we can have that, you know, have them come in. We can take off the crown, make them a new crown and get that seated before before Christmas. So okay. we, just, we just want some more people with pictures. So it doesn't have to be a missing tooth. You know, we, and we can do a partial, but we, we haven't had a lot of entries. So we want to expand it and say, hey, if you have that ugly tooth in the front, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make you a new crown. So what you need to do, you guys, is send a picture to rick at rickdancer.com by the 22nd of November. So if you have a cracked tooth, a bad tooth, something that needs a, a, a facelift, basically, mm -hmm. Um, that's what we're going to do for somebody. And we'll have that by Christmas. Yeah. We want to make sure if you need a root canal on a tooth, this is not what we want. We want somebody that has a, either they've had a root canal on the tooth or the tooth is still alive. It just has an ugly crown on it, ugly filling. Um, it's maybe broken, you know, like a third of it's broken. So we'll, uh, we, and we can do that. We can, I had a reason why I came up with this because the, the other day I had a person in my chair and I seated a crown and it was so beautiful because I have one of the best lab guys in America that does my crowns. And 
And I had my staff come over and said, tell me which crown, a tooth I just crowned. And not one person could tell which crown that, that was, a, that was a crown tooth. And it got me thinking that'd be great for somebody that can't afford it, like a crown or they have a broken front tooth to be able to do something like this, because I literally have, I mean, not only do I do good work, but you also have to have a wonderful lab. And I have one of the best lab guys that does like Hollywood smiles, uh, best lab guys in America. And it makes a huge difference. Okay. Uh, so, so Jess, I'll, Jess, if you have a tooth that's next door, to the front two, send it in, send the picture in and we'll look at it and we'll yeah. tell you. And then somebody loves Dr. Bratlin and somebody else says, can I nominate Isaac? You have to email me with a picture, rick at rickdancer.com and we'll get you in there. Hey, Michael, thanks for sponsoring Perfect. us. Thanks for Thank doing you. what you do. Appreciate having you on here. And we'll Thank get you. you a tooth. We'll find you a tooth. All right, so let's kick this thing off. With this, that's what I don't understand. From the 1120 AM and 93.7 FM, KPNW Studios, I'm Bill London. And look at you. <laughs> Sarah, look at that introduction. Isn't Rick you such a charmer? Bring the lion out. We had a sketch artist do a drawing. Um, tonight on our show, we're going to have... Music therapy has been shown to release... It's time now for Rick. Hey guys, don't you think it's kind of fun? that you get to comment on the news. There's a cost. Oh yeah, there's a cost. People come after you. Like, I think that's why this is so much fun. Now it's time to get real. I said, now it's time to get real. I mean, really real. It's a big dose of really real real with Rick. I'll see you at five. All right, and tonight again, we have Lincoln County Commissioner Claire Hall coming up in just a minute to talk about that new ordinance on the coast. Ender One is gonna be joining us back here in a little bit. But let's get off to, to start with Bill London from KPNW with all the day's news. Good evening from the News Radio 1120 AM and 93.7 FM KPNW Studios. I'm Bill London, but you can just call me Jorge. All right, here's a look at some of the stories we're following. The first is we've got some nasty weather that's coming our way. The National Weather Service out of Portland says we're going to get some periods of moderate to heavy rain with high snow levels. They're going to be starting tonight, and this warm front is going to move through the area for the next couple of days. They say the heavy rain is going to continue starting tonight and move through Thursday and Friday as what they're referring to as an atmospheric river pushing its way through the Pacific Northwest. We can expect that 24 hour rainfalls could range anywhere from one to two inches in the valleys, three to five inches in the coast range in the Cascades. And if you're a skier or you're a snowboarder and you're saying, yay, well, the freezing level is going to be above 10,000 feet. It's all coming down for the most part as water. Now, that may cause some localized flooding, but one of the main concerns, according to the National Weather Service, has to do with debris flows, particularly in the footprint of the 2020 uh, Labor Day weekend fires, in particular the Holiday Farm Fire, Lion's Head, Beachy Creek, and Riverside fires. So if you're going to be traveling on highways 126, Highway 20, Highway 22, and you're going through the Cascades, just note it could be uh, nasty going in some areas and to keep your eyes open. That would be normally the case in some of those steeper areas, particularly going over towards the coast as well, like Highway 34 and the like. But just be game on if you're going to be traveling through some of those narrow, steep areas over the next few days. Well, just about every industry has been hit with staff shortages, and the Oregon Department of Transportation says, yep, yeah, us too. Uh, ODOT claims there is a variety of reasons for the labor shortage, but one of them is the statewide vaccine requirement. Currently, there are about 167 workers short, and the way that's going to affect you is that it means this winter the roads may not be plowed and cleared as often as they would be normally during the winter. It means the snow could get deeper, the uh, ice could get a little bit thicker, and it may take longer for those things to get cleared. So much so that ODOT sent out the warning that if winter storms roll through, in particular the snow and the ice, that you need to be patient and if possible, just don't go. So former New York Times columnist, longtime New York resident and New York voter Nick Kristoff is running for Oregon's governor's seat. He says, well, you know, I grew up here as a kid, so I'm an Oregon resident. Anyway, 
So far, he is outpacing all of his main Democratic rivals. Actually, he's outpacing everybody in terms of money being raised for the governor's races coming up next year. As a matter of fact, he's raised more than a million dollars in less than a month. And if you're wondering where those campaign donations are coming from, the short answer, not Oregon. As a matter of fact, one of his largest contributions is $50,000 from Melinda Gates. Yeah, that Melinda Gates, the ex-wife of Bill Gates. Then you have Tom Berenthal. He is the fiancé of Facebook Chief Operating Officer Sheryl Sandberg. He's thrown in $50,000. Actress Angelina Jolie has thrown in ten grand, and about... $5,000 each from fashion designer Diane von Furstenberg, educated memoirist Tara Westover, and Kathy Sulzberger, the sister of the New York Times publisher A.G. Sulzberger. Again, all of them donated five grand apiece. So in other words, we're going to have a New Yorker running for governor in Oregon funded by other New Yorkers. Welcome to Oregon, or shall we just call it New York West. As far as how his money shapes up against, say, Tina Kotek, the Oregon House Speaker who's running for governor, she's raised so far, over several months, $414,000. On the GOP side, Salem oncologist Bud Pierce is the big money grabber at this point. He has $750,000 in his election kitty. So Oregon Secretary of State Shamia Fagan Tuesday released a cybersecurity audit of the Oregon Department of Consumer and Business Services, and they're not doing well. Auditors found the agency has not implemented some basic cybersecurity safeguards despite multiple communications about the weaknesses. Okay, this is Oregon. We just don't do IT here. Oh, we're good at bringing in great IT businesses, but as a state, IT, that's their, you know, they're still working in DOS on their Commodore 64s. Anyway, the security of Oregon's information resources, according to Shamia Fagan, our Secretary of State, should be a top priority, she says, for all state agencies. And that means the DCBS should take immediate action to address the findings outlined in the report. She said that she's glad that the DCBS leadership agrees with the recommendations in the audit, but agreeing and doing anything, well, those are two different things. The Center for Internet Security developed a series of prioritized best practices to help protect and safeguard information, also known as controls, and auditors found that DCBS, well, hasn't implemented the cybersecurity controls for all six basic foundational CIS controls reviewed, although they say some of the controls may be partially implemented. All right, so that's a look at some of the news tonight, and now it's time for a big old industrial-sized can of gelatinous reality with Rick. Rick, get real. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill. We appreciate you and all that information, I think. Angelina Jolie is donating to the governor's race in Oregon to a candidate who doesn't even live in Oregon. <laughs> ah. Okay, our next topic. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this, and I have to be up front. I kind of have sort of have a dog in the fight. I don't own property in Lincoln County, but I own property in the neighbor county, which is Tillamook County. Same kind of problems. Um, and, uh, you know, folks are frustrated. People who live at the Oregon coast are frustrated with those people who don't live there and come there on weekends and park their cars in their driveway or walk by the windows of our house and peek in the windows, see no trespassing signs and just walk through them, have loud parties and uh, just make the place kind of crazy. And so in Lincoln County, um, well, I'm going to bring Claire Hall on it because she can explain better than I can. She works there. So Claire. And Claire, and here also, um, just full disclosure, Claire and I know each other from college. And uh, so when I found this story, I went, I know who to call. I, I got her. I know who to call. So Yeah, Claire, 150 years ago or maybe 40 years exactly. ago, there we were at Pacific University. <laughs> Puppies. So Claire, tell people um, 
kind of what what happened, what the, what this ordinance does. Okay, this was put on the ballot by initiative petition, and it affects short-term rentals outside the city limits uh, here in Lincoln County. So, you know, that means like Lincoln City, Newport, Yahats are, in, are excluded, but Lincoln Beach, Gladeden Beach, uh, Seal Rock, uh, the big stretch between Walport and Yahats, uh, um, San, um, Bay Shore, about 500 and 30 rentals total that over the next five years their licenses will be phased out and they can no longer operate as short-term rentals wow yeah so that's a big impact on your economy i'm gonna guess oh yeah i mean you know uh tourism is really one of the three pillars of our economy along with fishing and tourism so, yeah, and uh, just to the county alone, bottom line, we're losing more than uh, $3 million of transient room tax revenue. Just from those. Exactly. So you guys, as a commission, you came up with, you've been working on this, but COVID kind of got in the way and you were mm -hmm. working on, a, on some better restrictions because you know you have a problem. Right. You know, five years ago, uh, we instituted our first licensing and enforcement program, and we said we'd come back to it and look at, uh, you know, necessary and appropriate adjustments. And we started that work very late in 2019. It was just getting off the drawing board. And unfortunately, first COVID hit. And then a few months later, the Echo Mountain Fire, which did major damage, wiped out hundreds of homes in the north part of the county. And we've got a small office. I know people sometimes think uh, government is full of bureaucracy, but uh, those two crises really took up about 90% of our bandwidth. So this did get back burnered. And in the meantime, Time, a group uh, calling themselves 15 neighborhoods who were fed up over the kind of things that you mentioned, you know, parking, noise, garbage, uh, organized. They wrote this petition. They put it on the ballot. And last week it passed by a pretty substantial 58 to 42 percent margin. And you say the opponents spent like two hundred thousand dollars trying to fight it. And yep. how much did the proponents pay? A little, uh, a little less than thirty thousand. So that says there's a lot of frustrated people out there. Indeed, indeed. Hey, now, can I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Claire. I was just yeah. wondering if I could respond to the question on screen. That's, that's, is it that's fair that people, going. you know, is it fair that people living in unincorporated areas get to vote on issues, you know, that affect? incorporated areas and our county clerk says you know this is just kind of a weird quirk of the oregon uh, uh legislative session the entire county got to vote even the people in the cities which aren't impacted by this at all and the other thing that you and i talked yesterday about this a little bit of a pregame is yep. what, one of the things that concerns me is you know we have this home in pacific city and so i'm in tillamook i'm paying taxes but I can't obviously vote in two counties, but sure. an ordinance like this comes up. And so most of the people, it's, I would guess a lot of people in the unincorporated areas affected by this would not be able to vote, um, mm -hmm. nor would people who lived in the cities, anybody else could vote if, if they didn't, weren't a residence, their main residence wasn't Lincoln County. So it's, it's really not giving voice to a bunch of people. It's kind of unfair because you're giving all the power to the people that want this change and the other people have no voice. Yeah, well over 80% of the owners of those 500-some uh, vacation rentals, their tax bills are going outside the county. So they had absolutely no voice in this. So what do you, you were talking yesterday and thinking that this probably is going to be challenged. Just, oh, you think, yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. Well, I uh, think that the uh, vacation rental organizations that challenged it, they're liable to uh, file suit. I think that's almost a given. The county may intervene. And of the uh, property owners, uh, we're anticipating uh, major ballot measure 49 claims. I'm sure people remember uh, measure 49 that saying that the government cannot take or reduce the value of your property without your consent. So uh, we're hoping for the best, but realistically, I'm thinking this is going to be a nightmare that we're going to be fighting in court for years. 
one of the arguments was that, and, and, and you and I both know the situation, you know, the case here is there's no housing, very little how affordable housing for people who work in these be these resort communities. But very you true. Saying, but you were saying that the problem is these homes are not places that people who are working down there could probably afford to stay anyway. I no. mean, to live. Yeah, I mean, we need apartments, uh, entry-level apartments, entry-level homes in places like, uh, you know, N Newport and Lincoln City. Uh, these are uh, homes, they're higher-end homes in, you know, places like, uh, say, Bay Shore, and uh, you know, if they're not ocean front, they're ocean view. And even if they can't be rented uh, on a nightly basis anymore, I would anticipate uh, the owners will either convert them to monthly rentals or uh, or just put them on the market, and certainly not at uh, rates affordable to the working men and women, uh, you know, working in our tourism industry. So what do we do? Because I was telling you yesterday, a guy that I ran into in Big Sur, uh, he, he has a, a resort right in the middle mm -hmm. and, and it's an hour and a half from any community. So he had to just he didn't have to, but he built housing for his 25 employees and keeps them there happy. They have their own community. It seems like a room tax or something that would go to help build affordable housing for people would be a better answer than you know, uh, doing this to private property owners. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. And actually that's something that I worked with a couple of other coastal county commissioners on a few sessions ago, but uh, you know, the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association uh, really uh, is wanting to hold the line and keep that room tax money going for tourism promotion. I can certainly understand that from the, uh, you know, from the industry standpoint, but at the same time, if some of that could be divor uh, diverted to building affordable housing, I think that would be a real plus in situations like this. So right now people have five years. What do you tell people who have property down there who are in the unincorporated areas who rent their property? What do they do in the meantime besides freak out? Well, we're telling them that uh, we are getting outside legal counsel. We, uh, you know, we do have a couple of staff attorneys, but we really need somebody that has expertise in Oregon land use. And uh, we're trying to get that uh, lined up now. Until then, you know, it's business as usual. About a year and a half ago, as this started, we did put a moratorium on new licenses. We're continuing to renew existing licenses. And at least for the moment, we're going to, con going to continue to do that. But uh, long term, you know, I know people want certainty, but unfortunately, we can't offer that kind of certainty right now. Since you're on the Oregon coast, I mean, you know, I think this is happening all over the state. Mm -hmm. is, uh, Oregon is being loved to death. Oh, yeah. And for you tourist communities and counties, um, it, it's a real problem. It is. And, you know, it's really a, uh, you, you, you know, it's a love-hate relationship. People know that it's a big part of our economy, uh, that it's providing lots of jobs. But at the same time, people get tired of, uh, you know, say dri driving from Newport to Walport, which is a 15 minute uh, uh, drive right now in uh, the summer is can be 45 minutes. So, uh, you know, but uh, I, I, I've tried to tell people we don't need to be cutting off our nose to spite our faces. Yeah. Yeah. Especially not right now. Hey. Yep. Claire Hall, thank you so much, Lincoln County Commissioner, for coming on, explaining that. There's a lot of people in our audience who are yahats and you know up and down the coast, and they're very concerned. So thank you for taking your time to kind of explain that through for us, and uh, and we'll keep in touch with you. Okay, Rick. Great to All talk right. to you. Thanks, Claire. See you later. Okay. All right. So there you go. Um, it's a super important issue, and I know right now it seems far away. But you wait. Um, I I see that happening all over the country, like Tahoe, other places. And it's one of those things that we got to watch because uh, things are getting there. Um, OK. And Tom Hunt said, Claire, thank you for filling us in. Yeah, I appreciate her. OK, so now 
a lot of you have been coming on going, where's Ender One? Where is he? Where's that guy? Well, we're keeping him hostage in the virtual green room. <laughs> I'm just going to bring you on, dude. How you doing, man? Uh, yeah, tell Angelina Jolie she didn't cut me a check. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm you. Sorry? Oh, I'm so, wait. You didn't. You didn't get yours. Yeah, she didn't um, text me back. And I was you know, pretty upset sorry. about it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, she didn't yes. respond, and I'm a little offended. So, well, you know, I'm gonna be moving to Montana, and I thought that would be the end of my, po you know, political career. But obviously, I can go there and just run for governor, and I'll just live there. You know, <laughs> hey, what the hell? I'm I, telling I, you, any time that I can connect with Angelina Jolie, it's always just a good experience. And so I'm really um, humbled by, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's up, man? Ender, you know, if you if you um, run for office, I will run your campaign for you. Hey, can you see me still or what? Yeah, you're there. Okay, the paste button isn't working. I was going to paste. Oh, now you went away. Okay, so while he gets back on, he will be getting back on. Let me show you his new video. This is his new song, and I want you to just sit still and watch this and um, because it's really great. And then we'll come back. Ender, when you're there, so I'm going to bring the song up. And then we'll get you going here. So here's his new release. Backs of trauma, easily triggered Like you don't need a gun Cause you are the loaded weapon I wonder if that's the karma Showing me flashing pictures Playing with my guilt Like lawyers and co-defendants Like if I'm really not guilty Why am I so defensive? Like I gotta convince myself Of my own intentions A prisoner of my emotions And I fucking hate to admit it But I'm the guy who wrote that sentence My heart is too broke to mend it Say you love me, hope you meant it Honestly don't have that many So I hold on close to friendship Eyes rolling, I can sense it Might as well wear an every fucking coat appendant That says I'm codependent I ask, is this really what the good lord intended? Survivor's guilt so real Can't enjoy my own blessings Violence and aggression I cycle through each lesson To find temporary peace Like I don't own it I just went to be gone I'm getting tired of this old pair of shoes I've been running most of my life For most of my life I've been hiding skeletons in my closet Guarded and locked up tight Like if I don't see them Then they aren't there But I still feel them breathing When they come up for air Yeah, I'm done saving every my pen it's like a rusty shovel i used to dig up certain skeletons that are tearing me up and it isn't right but what's left in the other is the baggage i can't drop so i carry a grudge like old books you blow off the air is just dust even the covers almost ripped like they could tear at your touch feels like a smoking gun fresh from a derringer slug my hands dirty from those stories still buried in the mud i've told you everything i swear i've shared enough no one I'm lying like OJ in the court wearing that glove Now I'm the old dude in a t-shirt that I wear to the club That says I miss the days when I didn't know what self-care was I'm going to therapy twice a week They tell me to share and I'm trying to speak But all my words are falling off like I can't find the beat I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired I took the kerosene they poured on me and lit the fire I'm a survivor so wait, oh you need help? Then sure I can be your rock And if we talk, you can trust I won't let a sentence be known All I ask is you at least make a little effort to walk It's just cause I'm solid Don't mean you'll use me as a stepping stone mother. I'm getting tired of this old pair of shoes I've been running most of my life For most of my life I've been hiding skeletons in my closet Guarded and locked up tight Like if I don't see them Then they aren't there But I still feel them breathing When they come up for air Yeah, I'm done saving everyone else Now I gotta try to save myself 
I love that song. Hey, oh thank God. you. Can you hear me all good? Sorry, I cut out earlier. Yeah, no, no, no. You're 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 good. Um, can't wait to receive my already ordered limited edition shirts for this. Um, hey. And then fuck yeah, Andrew one. Fuck normal. <laughs> shout out, yeah. Shout I out, Corey. Over. Anyone tapping out? Um, so, I can't see the comments that good because I'm on my phone. But salute to everyone tapping in. I love you guys more than words. So, yeah, where does that come from? You know what I mean? I mean, there's obviously deep pain in your life. I mean, from the past. Because you, you, it's something about when you do that. I mean, I've never been to jail and I've never been arrested, but there's something in what you do that you get me. I mean, you know, what I, mean? I mean, you, I, I think that's what it is, Ender One. I think you, I, I feel like you understand me, even though you don't know me. I'm, I, maybe we all find a little piece of ourselves in you. I, I don't know. Well, honestly, that's like, <clears throat> that's like the biggest compliment as a musician, in my opinion, that I could get because, uh, um, you know, I got I got fans all over the spectrum, you know, as far as age, as far as um, anything political, as far as, um, you know, you name it. And so I don't um, you know, I, I wear these sweatshirts and and uh, um, and write music the way I do, because I refuse to be in a fucking box. And uh, um, I'm not a big fan of stereotypes on any level, you know, and just because. I might disagree with somebody on certain points um, does not mean that we can't have uh, a conversation. That doesn't mean that, you know, um, I can't somehow reach them. And so when it comes down to my music, it's kind of funny, too, because I remember back in the day when I was younger, I never made music on like a, um, on like a level that was like this could be a career. I more made music just out of a hobby because it was something that was fun. It was good at it. Could get girls or, you know, whatever the stupid justification was um, for my dumbass young ego. But um, the older I got, you know, excuse my language to your, to your viewers that, that might be watching with, with some virgin ears, but the older I got and the more I grew up with my music, the less I gave a fuck about outside opinions on what I do. And once I started separating uh, that with what I do, it's funny how all of a sudden my fan base grew and my, um, you know, my professional uh, career as far as music kind of started to take off, which only really, you know, I, I consider myself still a, uh, still a baby at this because really in, in the last four to five years is the only time that I really kind of buckled down. and was like, OK, let's look at this like a career. And, uh, and reaching, like you said, somebody who might not necessarily listen to hip hop on a regular basis, especially underground shit like what I'm doing. Um, that's a that's a big compliment. And I appreciate it. And uh, and yeah, that's that's hopefully what a song like that does is connect with people no matter where you're at. So do you th do I, I, I like what you're saying, because I think that I found that in my own business is the more I become true to who I am and what I believe. Um, yeah, you lose people because there's people that don't that don't want to like you for that. Mm -hmm. But then you're the truth. You know, there's a there's a whole oh, I don't know mean to get biblical on you, but you were saying good Lord in there. So I get but, you know, the truth sets you free. And when you find your truth, it does set you free. Don't you think that's true? Facts. Um, you know, and it's it's funny how just a little um, a little phrase like that can can bring so much. I mean, genuinely, I think it boils down to acceptance. You know, um, I had to get to a place in my life where I was willing to accept that my music is not for everybody. You know, right. the things that I say aren't going to give everybody the, you know, the goosebumps and the, you know, it's not going to it's not going to fit for everybody. And, and I'm OK with that. And I think that's like a big thing just on an individual level is learning to um, have some acceptance in who you are. And the more that you do that, then it goes hand in hand with what I said earlier as far as the more that i accept myself the less i give a fuck about those people who don't because right. uh, you know and that's you no know, i hope that's not coming off in some kind of like entitled ego way it's just a matter of like i know um the man that i was and he's not who i'm trying to be anymore and right. um i'm trying to do something different and um and learning to be transparent in my personal life you know i'm a recovering addict and alcoholic with 16 years clean and sober so learning to be okay with myself is something that is a constant learning and recovery so it only made sense musically that if i wasn't going to be transparent with my music through my music then then what good was it 
then then what good was it? And I know that's deeper than the average, you know, maybe Joe wants to go when they think about music. But for me, that's uh, um, that's kind of the concrete of why I do what I do. You know, my music, I don't make a song and I'm like, man, I really hope Rick Dancer likes it. You right. know, like, <laughs> like right. I don't I don't give a shit. You know, I make the music therapeutically for me. And then on release date, when it comes, I've said this before on my social media went out on those release dates. Those release dates are almost like sitting with a therapist because they're finally like, OK, I can let this go. And uh, and then seeing it bless someone else from any kind of dirt or my my dark shit bless someone else. That to me is it. Then it take some of that burden away from what that darkness was to me is being able to reach and connect with somebody else. And, uh, um, you know, that's to me, that's what it's all about. So here's, I think that this, this guy, this guy right here explains it best. I swear this reformed gentleman is speaking as one of my demons expressing deeper truths that I'm ready to admit to myself from someone mm. with PTSD, BPD amongst other issues. I mm -hmm. think that you, Salute. I think you hit all of our, um, some of us are on the spectrum. Some of us just don't fit in. Some of us have been bullied and shit on and yeah. some of us, you know, so, and I think that you being honest with, and the way you do it and putting stuff in there, because, because when you start going like there's that part where all of a sudden you just start going boom, boom, boom. It's like, you're hitting us with this words. And it's like one after the other, mm -hmm. after the other, that's when I start getting kind of teary because it's like going, somebody else understands how I feel. Right. You know, and well, if people haven't been or aren't going through a hard time or, you know, you know, those people that go, Oh, my life is kind of, you know, it seems like it's always perfect. Bullshit. It's like life is perfect. Bullshit. But I call bullshit people, right off the bat. Those are people who don't deal with their don't deal with their shit. And so you people who've dealt with their shit, you you kind of bring it out in us, I think. You know what I mean? That that I don't know what it is. Well, and I appreciate that, you know, ultimately, because, you know, you heard me say bullshit because, you know, anyone uh, in in this world that's living currently right now, if if they think they have it all figured out, if I ever thought that I had figured out that to me, that's the first sign that I don't. To me, that's right. the. That's the that's the first sign that I don't. And admitting um, that it's OK to be fucked up, that it's OK to not be OK is like is giant. It's giant for me still. It's giant for me still. Like the comment that was dropped. I got PTSD. I'm severely depressed. I got severe anxiety. I got a laundry list of other shit. However, learning um, learning to accept and understand that by voicing it right, by letting it instead of letting it sit and yep, fucking yep. in the darkness, right? Shadows only exist in that darkness. But if I can expose it, if I can speak on it, even in this, a little interview, live social media, a comment, a post, a song or whatever, if I can do that, it alleviates a little bit of that. And what it also in turn does is it connects with other people, reminds them that I'm not alone. And what's funny is uh, it then in, in, in return from that connection reminds me that I'm not alone. Right. And and that to me, I think, is a basis that as a world um, on some level, every single person watching this, every single person in on the face of the planet has felt pain and has felt alone. And I, if there's one thing that I really try to connect with, especially with my deeper songs like this song, Self Care, or like my song Tired or like my song Cry Now, these these vulnerable songs you know, didn't fucking come from something pretty, you know, they came from a dark place. And um, however, being able to see the reactions it has, like this self-care video has gotten more views than any other video that I've gotten in my music career. It just crossed like 72,000 views today in three weeks, which for some people, they're like, that's not shit, you know, that's not nothing. But for a stay-at-home dad rapper from Oregon, um, who literally does everything out of this office space that you're looking at right now. Um, it's a surreal blessing to connect with people on a level that's deeper than just, oh yeah, I heard that song. That's a good song, you know? Yeah. And um, it's almost that's how I connect with music. And so to see it connect with other people like that is a humbling thing that I really don't, I, I don't, I don't even have fucking words for to be honest. Don't you think all of us are kind of just in this place where we're just longing to, have i just want to be told the truth i'm tired of being lied to i want to um, give a shout out real quick to grace st james she's just tapped in here and she's that's yeah she was one of my closest friends i love you to death 
don't you think though that we're we're kind of um are you on spotify of course of course yeah absolutely um, i tried to leave a comment in the chat and i posted it and it wouldn't let me i'll try to do it again maybe um i don't you know. might have sometimes you can't if you're not on there like you might be on the wrong page where you can't if you're on the get real page you can do it um or you can go back afterwards or let me know and i'll put something on there for you so do you think I, I, I think that this song comes out at the perfect time, um, Ender One, because um, I think we're just all in this place where, you know, I, I, I want to say I think we're all kind of mentally ill. <laughs> just, just, you know, Sorry. I mean, I think all of us are just two, two years locked down. I mean, it's not been constant, but I mean, being under control, being told what to do. I think all of us are just at this point where we're going, oh, my God, does anybody get it? Does anybody understand how I feel? And I think that's why this is also reaching other people. And you tend to reach people that are that like me and others that um, have dysfunction in our lives. I mean, struggle with depression, struggle with, you know, I think creative people do. And I think that's why we fall into this you know, that song just tears me apart every time I listen to it. You know, um, that's the thing is we're dealing with something right now and we're all living in a time that we're all never going to forget. You know what I mean? And uh, um, I feel like in a world that is constantly um, divided, where constantly there's negativity, where constantly you can't escape, whether it be social media, whether it be your friends. I mean, I'll be walking around at a grocery store or something like that. And you bump into somebody and what's the first thing that they want to talk to you about. They want to talk to you about COVID. They want to talk to you about all this other shit. And the fact is we live in a heavy world right now where um, uh, having just joy in general or a common sense of peace isn't so common right now. And I feel like the more um, understanding and empathy uh, that we are all literally just trying to fucking make it, we are all just trying to wake up and function um, instead of getting caught up in who doesn't agree with my path and who who's fighting me or who's negative or who's that. Um, it's so much wasted energy, you know, and uh, um, it's it's a weird time to live in general. And so when it comes down to my music, when I get a message from somebody you know, uh, whether they're uh, a nurse like my wife, my wife's a nurse or wh whether they're um, somebody who is just working at a grocery store or whatever. And they, I get a comment or a message that says, hey, I just want you to know that, that your music helped me get through a little piece of my day. Like those little things might be corny and cliche to somebody. For me, that little three minutes, right, that three minute break of peace that somebody can have by listening to something that, you know, um, might have came from a, a, an extremely deep place. That, that means the world because there's too much trying to pull us apart based on a whole bunch of different shit, you know? And uh, I just, I refuse to buy in and to play the game, you know? Um, that's just where I'm at. Okay, so tell people about your concert, where it is, when it is, how do they get, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is that the ticket information on Linktree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did it go up? Did it go? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. So tell people um, about that so, stuff. Yeah, so, so the Linktree on there has, has all my... Uh, um, my links to my Spotify, to my YouTube, to my, um, uh, yeah, to the tickets. So this is my first headlining show in my home state of Oregon in two years. And wow. like literally since the beginning of lockdown, beginning of quarantine. So it's a, it's a very big deal to me and my family. It's uh, December 17th. The tickets um, are cheap. We made them like that on purpose. They're only 10 bucks for a ticket. On top of that, we're doing something uh, pretty special the night of show. I can't, I can't give it away yet. I can't drop the secret like that yet. But um, there's something special that each person in attendance is gonna is gonna experience on that night exclusively. And uh, yeah, December 17th, tickets are on sale right now. It's uh, it's 21 and up. So I'm sorry to my young bucks, but uh, yeah, this is my first headlining show in two years back in my home state, and uh, too long as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's gonna be surreal. So anybody out there, I would love to see you in person if you can get there. That's for sure. So where is it again? It's at uh, a new club downtown. It's called the Big Dirty. My uh, my brother Ki Design, one of the best artists, one of the best hosts, one of the best MCs in general, and uh, my brother uh, Kenny Wilson and his group, the Primates. Um, if you don't know who they are, look them up. Local, um, one of the illest bands in general. They're a full fledged band, and uh, and they kill it. And uh, they'll be rocking with me too. It's gonna be a crazy 
a crazy night for sure. And, uh, and just good vibes and good music in general. And, uh, yeah, they did an amazing job inside this club. They spent thousands on the lighting in there. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty intense. We've got some pretty cool things planned. So where is that? What is it? What's it in? So it's to... literally right downtown Eugene. What did it um, used to be? What the building used to be? Do you remember? You know, I think oh. it used to be some kind of brewery back in the day. It's next to, uh, the, um, Oh God, what is that one place called? Uh, Starlight. It's next to Starlight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that big building right on the corner. Anyways, it's gonna be a, a crazy time. There's some there's some really cool things in the work. Tickets are limited, so if you're seeing this, go get them. But uh, um, I'm I'm pretty excited for it to be back on a stage in my home state, especially in my hometown for the first time in two years. Like I get I get nerves just talking about it, which is weird, you know, because I've I've been on stage quite a few times in my life in front of thousands of people, and uh, but throughout the last two years, I went from doing 150 plus shows a year to doing four or five. So it's like, it's a really weird dynamic, but I cannot wait um, to be in my hometown, to be in my home state. So yeah, it, it should be a blast, man. So um, yeah, people are just coming on doing this. You know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna let you uh, do your thing, but I'm gonna play your your video one more time. Okay. I'm just gonna add it in this, add it in this mix here. And let people kind of go out with that. Andrew, well, thanks for being with me. Of course, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me, man. And it's not good. It's all good. You ever have flashbacks of trauma, easily triggered? Like you don't need a gun, cause you are the loaded weapon I wonder if that's the karma, showing me flashing pictures Playing with my guilt, like lawyers and co-defendants Like if I'm really not guilty, why am I so defensive? Like I gotta convince myself of my own intentions a prisoner of my emotions and I fucking hate to admit it But I'm the guy who wrote that sentence My heart is too broke to mend it Say you love me, hope you meant it Honestly don't have that many So I hold on close to friendship Eyes rolling, I can sense it Might as well wear an every fucking coat a pendant That says I'm codependent I ask, is this really what the good lord intended? Survivor's guilt so real Can't enjoy my own blessings Violence and aggression I cycle through each lesson To find temporary peace like I don't own it, I just went to be gone. I'm getting tired of this old pair of shoes. I've been running most of my life. For most of my life, I've been hiding skeletons in my closet, guarded and locked up tight. Like if I don't see them, then they are there. But I still feel them breathing when they come up for air. Yeah, I'm done saving everyone else. Now I gotta try to save myself. In one hand is my pen, it's like a rusty shovel. I used to dig up certain skeletons that are tearing me up And it isn't right, but what's left in the other Is the baggage I can't drop So I carry a grudge like old books you blow off The air is just dust, even the covers almost ripped Like they could tear at your touch Feels like a smoking gun, fresh from a Derringer slug My hands dirty from those stories still buried in the mud I've told you everything, I swear, I've shared enough no one I'm lying like OJ in the court wearing that glove Now I'm the old dude in a t-shirt that I wear to the club That says I miss the days when I didn't know what self-care was I'm going to therapy twice a week They tell me to share and I'm trying to speak But all my words are falling off like I can't find the beat I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired I took the kerosene they poured on me and lit the fire I'm a survivor so wait, oh you need help? Then sure I can be your rock And if we talk, you can trust I won't let a sentence be known All I ask is you at least make a little effort to walk It's just cause I'm solid Don't mean you'll use me as a stepping stone mother I'm getting tired of this old pair of shoes I've been running most of my life For most of my life I've been hiding skeletons in my closet Guarded and locked up tight Like if I don't see them Then they aren't there But I still feel them breathing When they come up for air Yeah, I'm done saving everyone else now I gotta try to save myself